A few weeks ago, I set out a challenge to print these. This is the Maker's Muse tolerance gauge test that I designed in Fusion 360, and I challenged you guys to print it to see how accurate your 3D printers could reproduce thin gaps between parts. So my machines got down to about 0.2, maybe 0.15 if I was very careful on the Prusa i3 Mark II, but really 0.2 was as far as I pushed it, and I put it out to you guys to see what you could reproduce. So in this video, it's gonna be a bit of like a reactionary video. I don't really do stuff like this very often, but I'm gonna check out what you guys have been up to in trying to reproduce this and to see how fine you've actually managed to push it. Let's get started. Welcome back guys. So I'm gonna start with YouTube and then move through to Twitter and then I've got one on Instagram as well. And basically, uh, sorry if I missed your video out. I've found as many as I could in terms of people who have made video or uh, picture responses to this uh, this tolerance gauge test. But we're gonna start with uh, FPTC Drafting, who's made this video with very lovely music. And I think he's printing it on the Stacker 3D printer, which is a massive machine. Uh, I'm just gonna pause there, because it looks like you're getting a bit of uh, what's called elephant foot, where the bottom layer is kind of squish out because the bed's a bit too close um, and that may affect tolerances at the end. It's definitely looking a little bit rough, I will say that. Uh, my intention is not to play the whole video through, of course, because that's you can go check it out on their channels. Um, skipping forward towards the end. There's a bit of curling of the PLA. That middle one's curling up, which is definitely a bit of a cooling issue. Printing a bit too hot, perhaps. And I think, as you can see, it's cooling, curling up. And yeah, it's caught, so it's just spitting in that slot, and uh, <laughs> it's loose, unfortunately. So, so uh, by the looks of the video, you've managed to get to 0.3, which is admirable. 0.3 is pretty decent in terms of clearances, and the middle one spins as well, which is nice. And there's a cat. Can't go wrong with the cat. So that's pretty cool. So, well done on that. That's 0.3. It's not bad at all. Then we've got our uh, Ben Hitchcock. <laughs> you sound like another fellow Aussie, I do appreciate that. Uh, he's printing on ABS on his uh, Delta, by the looks of it. Uh, that's a fat brim. That is a very thick brim. <laughs> there. That's a very big brim to hold down some ABS. Uh, I do apologize to all of you guys as well. The key kind of sucks. Um, in practice, it looks beautiful when you print it, but in practice it probably needs to be uh, two in terms of uh, like just just a just a bar instead of a three pronged affair, I might change that. Okay. So point two is good, and then I believe you got point one five clear as well. Point one five. You just had trouble with this one. I did have trouble with this one. <laughs> point one five did that. <laughs> uh, always good when the plastic cracks. <laughs> Cool, so okay. so Ben got 0.15 clear as well, uh, which is pretty admirable, considering that it's ABS, which is a lot harder to print. You've laid down a really thick brim to stick that part down, and you're managing to get 0.15. So congrats, sir. <laughs> well done. So next we have uh, ABH, and he did two videos, but I'm just going to focus on this one. So this is printed on the Raze 3D N1. Uh, side note, I may be getting a raised printer, not the distant, not so distant future, perhaps. They're pretty cool, I got to see them at National Manufacturing Week. Uh, I've got a Bond Tech on there, that looks like an aftermarket modification to me, I would say. And I think in terms of the accuracies, it appears that everything works, which is really, really surprising. And I will say there's a little bit of doubt that a 3D printer using FDM and a 0.4 nozzle can actually do 0.05, although it does appear to turn in this video. Um, not to doubt your expertise at all, but I'm wondering if the slicer did something to offset it. If not, that's probably one of the most impressive things I've ever seen, but I will say that um, depending on what slicer you're using, some will artificially offset faces. But either way, that's a darn impressive effect, uh, result, and a very nice looking print as well in a uh, pearlescent white off the raise, so well done ABH, that's pretty sick. Right, uh, so next we've got Inside the Mind of Matt, another guy that I've quite enjoyed um, watching this video. And um, 
he's printed two of the, the tolerance gauges. One was on the Anet A8, and one was on the uh, the trusty Monoprice Maker Select. Um, you need a better scraper, dude. That you <laughs> you need to get a nice sharp scalpel uh, style one that you don't have to push towards yourself. Even though it's sharper, it will be safer. That's um, because the the build tech like surface on these machines really um, really nice, needs a nice sharp edge to get under otherwise you'll end up giving it bubbles so the anet a8 should probably be able to get a 0 0.03 at least so maybe your extrusion multipliers you can dial it back and maybe the temperature dial it down a little bit looks like it had no problem sticking and i believe the on monitor price you actually didn't even get the 0.4 going which is definitely it definitely should be able to do the 0.4 so I think just a slight tweak to settings on temperature and extrusion multiplier, you'll probably be able to get both the Anet A8 and the uh, Monoprice Mega Select probably about the same. You should be able to get 0.3 and maybe even 0.2 clear, depending on your um, extrusion multiplier. Next, we have probably the most beautiful video in the lineup, which is, which is produced by Wok Brenner. So this is on a Ultimaker with a dual extruder magnetic tool changer modification. It's so sexy. The cinematography, music's perfect, and the print is flawless. The best, one of the best prints in the lineup, actually. Volkbrenner actually did two videos, one of them here showing the tolerances and the clearances. So he got down to 0.15 and 0.1 as well, I believe, as well here. Oh, almost, there you go. But not the 0.05, because you didn't show it. Um, and then another one here. I mean, that's such a good print, dude. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> that's a really impressive modification. Hats off to you for making an Ultimaker work so well with dual extrusion without going far as the Ultimaker, Ultimaker 3. Um, that's super impressive. Gets a bit stickier, but um, it's really impressive that the 0.1 works. That's really good clearance. And you see how loose the 0.5 is there? That means the tolerances are really good because the 0.5 if you don't have good tolerances, will still work, but be tight. Whereas it should be that loose. It should be really wobbly, like that. <laughs> right, next we have Alex. And I love Alex's video because he started like, you know, no, no, no cuts, no jump cuts. Straight from popping it off the bed to freeing it up. <laughs> um, and um, looking in the uh, description, using the Monoprice MP Select Mini, sliced in Cura 2.5 with... Uh, was it 1.4 layer height? That doesn't look right. I think you mean 0.14 or maybe 0.1 with a four millimeter nozzle. I'm not sure. Um, and it's running genetic PLA plus. So by the looks like he's gotten them all free, which is darn impressive. I mean, again, the 0.05 should theoretically be impossible due to the, the stepping of the 0.4 nozzles. Uh, maybe if you did a 0.2 nozzle, maybe it would work. But I think, again, this might be a case of the slicer settings, Cura may be doing something. I'm going to look into it actually to see what goes on, but either way, super impressive result, especially because you just chiseled it off glass. So last video in the lineup for YouTube is Nick, who, um, that's me, <laughs> um, who did a tolerance test. Oh, I'm talking to my, talking over myself. <laughs> so Nick printed this on the Aldi's 3D printer, the Cocoon Create, which um, is one of the machines I love to use. And he actually got the 0.15 millimeter gap to work, which is awesome. So clearly you've got your settings dialed right in for the Cocoon Create Wanhao i3 machine. Uh, they're great machines. They're cheap, they're reliable, you can modify them and you can obviously tune them to a good result. So go check out his video as well. I'm gonna link all of these in the description and that's me again. Uh, so you guys can go check out these videos I've gone through in succession. Going on to Twitter, so Basically, this is what I posted originally. This is what the file looks like if you're going to do a cross-section. This is what the 0 0.05 looks like. I mean, there's not much clearance there. It's really close. So that's why I sort of suspect that the people getting 0.5 to, 0 0.05 to work uh, may, be, may be a slicer thing separating them artificially. Again, it's just a theory. I have no idea. Maybe FDM is that accurate. Either way, it's really impressive. These are the results that I'm seeing. So we've got Jeremiah saying he's able to free all the pieces of the test except for the 0 0.05. That's a really well-tuned FDM on the Ultimaker 2 Plus. Um, this is Jury who was actually going, feeding back into what I was talking about with the impossibility of doing this 0 
He is correct in a way saying that the steps will start to get too close together due to the layer heights and the nozzle diameter. It's not going to look exactly like this. Your edges will look a bit rounded. The extruder doesn't extrude a flat edge. It will extrude a rounded edge. So that's why you're getting some clearances. But it is a good theory as to why some work and some don't. And we've got David the Walker who managed to get the 0 0.05 wheel to turn. Again with Cura. So I'm suspecting Cura is doing something here. Again, just a theory, don't eat me alive, but um, again, very, very impressive off the end at A8, but it may have something to do with the slicer. Um, we've got AD who printed the tolerance test and got to the point two, which is the same I got. Again, not bad at all. That's, that's you know, very much, it's better than some of the machines I've tested on the market, so pretty darn impressive. This one's interesting. Tim printed it on the Formlabs Form 2 and found that none of them moved at all, so... This test, although there is, you know, the Form 2 is very accurate, it might be something to do with the fact that there's parts being uh, polymerized near each other and like the laser might have over, over, you know, over curing on the edges and things like that. So those gaps may be uh, solidifying instead of being free with a liquid to flow through. I'm not sure, but either way, um, that was a solid, <laughs> solid fail, unfortunately. But uh, thank you, Tim, for testing it because I would have tested it as well. I might still do it. But clearly, these sort of tests are better suited for FDM. Uh, this one's interesting. Michael did the tolerance test on the Mono uh, Mono Price Select Mini V2, um, and only got the 0.5 millimeter to rotate. So I will probably say that this one on this side was printed at too coarse a layer height, and maybe this one as well. It's hard to tell by the video from the from the photo. But you definitely want like a 0.2 or 0.15 or even 0.1 millimeter layer height to give it as much of a chance as you can. Uh, but yeah, if it's only 0.5 working, you may need to dial back your extrusion multiplier. It may be too much, you may be extruding too much material, which judging by the infill there, you might be, although it's, it's, there's a gap there, hmm. Might be the extruder, I'm not sure. Guys who have a Monoprice uh, Select Mini V2, maybe dial, uh, tune in in the comments of this video and help Michael out or find him on Twitter. This is my favorite one. Uh, Rob's, Rob's tolerance test approach uh, wasn't exactly successful, but he ended up with a bit of art. Um, <laughs> we've all seen this before. When your print detaches and sticks to your extruder, uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, well done, Rob. At least yours looks the most interesting. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, and this is Randy's one. So, he managed to get a pretty good result, but the 0.15 snapped the key. That seems to be... The, you know, the real maker or breaker of a well-tuned FDM is if the 0.15 works. So, I think that's the one to gun for. I think I'm, I'm going to try to get my printer sliding, slicer settings dialed in enough so the 0.15 works. Oh, we've got a CR10, CR10 offering. So, SK Studios tested it out on their CR10 using S, uh, Simplify 3D, 0.15 layers, and uh, they managed to get... Um, oh, they made their own key because my key is so terrible. <laughs> Custom key. Um, by the looks of it, I managed to get uh, pretty much all of them working except the 0 .05, I would say. Um, yeah, well done. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> I will update the key and update the Gumroad so everyone who's downloaded it can get the new key because the current key is pretty terrible. Um, and finally, going to finish up with Jock Spice on Instagram who did a pretty darn good job as well. Is the Maker's Muse tolerance test, printed on my Prusa uh, i3 Mark II, um, and it's turned out very nicely anyway, nice print. Tolerances, well, 0. 0.5 is a doddle, 0. 0.4. I love that, yeah, no 0. 0.5 now. is 0. a doddle. <laughs> yep, yeah. not a problem. 0. 0.2 needed a bit of persuasion to shift, but yes, it's there. So 0. 0.2 uh, works. 0. 0.15. Again, you the farm. again, never mind. <laughs> Point one five seems to be that catch. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this unconventional Makers Muse video. I certainly enjoyed going through to seeing all of your results and responses to making these tolerance gauges and seeing the range of results. I mean, some people couldn't get 0.5 to work. Some people got the 0.05 to work. I am still skeptical, but hey, it's pretty impressive to see the sort of results. And it means you can take those that data down. So when you design things in your 3D software, you know what result, what, what tolerances 
to put into place. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse. If you want to subscribe to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, be sure to, it will help the channel out a huge amount. But if you're watching this video, you probably already subscribed, which of which I very much appreciate. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys, bye. He has placed satellites into orbit.